One of the teachers in school in grammar tells my daughter, "Your dad does does he have any uh, basements?" <laughs> I'm like, "Yes, beta, I'm going to show you a basement. Come with me. Let's go. This is our basement. It's a good TV. It's like 60, 70 inches. Look, the chair is for safety. It's not for human. But what you make out of that uh, status or what you make out of that position is up to you. I actually approach people's party." There is no place for a Karachiite, a Mehman businessman like me to join politics. PTI had a long list of people waiting, so I didn't have an opportunity there. Where do I go? Uh, so so you don't need to be a citizen. You don't need to be a citizen to invest in uh, the United States. Wow. You can be 100% owner living so in Pakistan. I can be sitting here right. with Pakistani income as a Pakistani citizen, and I can acquire a U.S. business. All I need to do is send my funds abroad. Uh, politics is not a means to filling up your bank account. to feeding your family to feeding your kids it's not possible and i don't want my son living on 68000 rupees a month details my name is fazan sayed founder and ceo of east river and today i have a dear friend with me who is also the special assistant to the prime minister and the minister of state for information technology and he's going to talk to me about the future of technology and the state of affairs in pakistan right now sadiq iftikhar how are you so good thank you for having me on the show it was a long overdue especially after my son tells me that baba why isn't your friend calling <laughs> calling you to the show he's a rave on tiktok so thank you for having me the first thing i have to ask you is You are the special assistant to the prime minister. You've been, uh, you are a minister of state for IT and telecom, but you've only been in active politics for less than five years. Yes, that how, is true. How does one get this kind of upward trajectory in such a, such a small span of time? It's almost like you're a startup that went unicorn in five years. Um, thank you for the compliment. I think it's because of uh, friends, support structure within the party, and the family. Uh, audience, I'd like to bring to your attention. Fazan was one of the motivating factors for me joining politics. As a matter of fact, uh -oh. not. No. <laughs> I Let don't me make I a disclaimer. Said, I don't think I told you to join politics. No, no. Well, you, you know, you. Uh, <laughs> I said, me, find your calling. You, you <laughs> led me to that direction. You led the horse to the water. But yes, he didn't suggest the political party that I joined. But yes, he was one of the motivating factors. You know, in everyone's life, there is, uh, there is. a time where they need a conversation and that conversation happened uh, with Fazan although a, a junior in school from me uh, but he did give me an intellectual clarity as such as to what i wanted at that part of my life because i recently moved back from the states right so i remember having a uh, in depth 45 minutes to an hour conversation although he was uh, you were with your wife having dinner at some friends I, house i still didn't say join politics no well uh, <laughs> uh, So it, it was about uh, finding my relevance, finding yeah, finding my, your cause. Yes, yes, finding a cause, finding a reason to have moved yeah. back, and then you know I finally, with conversations I had with uh, Fazan and other friends, realized that politics would be the route to go. You know, yes, it has a few uh, advantages, like you know the the whole power concept, which is. which is overrated as such in politics but it is there uh, when i moved back you know there were certain issues that i faced law and order issues people usurping my land etc etc and every corner i went to there was rejection and dejection so how do you change the system and, and if you're facing issues with land being grabbed absolutely think of the common man no it was terrible i mean i'll tell you i was thrown out of my own land that i paid for working in the us and investing into uh, in, in karachi You know what uh, these expats go to, go through, and I experienced it firsthand. So you know right. where 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 do I make this change? How do I make this change? Was the question, and this conversation led to a suitable answer for me, was to join politics and try to see if I could make a difference. But but I'm going to pause right there. Join politics. Join politics. Fine, you reach that yes. conclusion, which is not what I suggested. Right. I said find your calling. <laughs> <laughs> I spent 15 minutes walking you through yes, that. Yes, you did. You did. But then you go on and join which political party? I joined MQM Pakistan. Person with your background, right? With your pedigree, with your upbringing, with your schooling, you went and spent years in the US. 
does not think of MQM in this day and age. Why would you? I mean, there was so many other options. Yeah, Why would you pick the one that has been branded yeah. in the way it has been branded that went through a series of issues? Fazan, now right this is this is a candid show. PTI is going through the same issue now. At that time, MQM went through the issue that PTI is going. So see, what MQM was was a victim of its past and perception. Although an egalitarian political party, if a person like me in three or five years can get to a status of federal minister and be a part of their organization committee, which is called the Rapta Committee, which is the most uh, superior uh, organization that MQM has, I'm a part of it in, let's say, within five years. So there has to be a place for people that are motivated, that want to make a difference. And MQM does give you that opportunity to go ahead and, you know, achieve what you want to achieve. And you're right. I mean, there, there's a perception and I faced that a lot. My kids faced that a lot. In school, as a matter of fact, one of the teachers in school in Gamma tells my daughter, your dad, does, does he have any, uh, uh, what was that? Uh, basements? <laughs> I'm like, yes, beta, I'm going to basement with you. Come on, this is our basement. It's a good TV, like that, 60, 70 inch. Ka. So yes, the perception is there. Uh, for the first That's three... Why do you want to piggyback see, for, on but, that but, perception? But see, for the first four years, my social invites also decrease. But since I've become minister, all those people are re-inviting me. But also. are they inviting you or are they inviting the minister? So it's always this, uh, it's always the position that matters. They get kursi ko salam hai, insaan ko nahi hota. But what you make out of that uh, status or what you make out of that position is up to you. You can either destroy the reputation or you can make or rebuild the reputation and rebuild the trust of the people that have been lost, that has been lost in translation. See, MQM was never represented by people like you or me. Yes, it, yeah, during the inception, yes, it was, was made say. by people like you and me, the most educated of the educated, the cream of the cream. See, and you tell me, I actually approached People's Party. They didn't have place for a Karachiite, a Mayman businessman like me to join politics. PTI had a long list of people waiting, so I didn't have an opportunity there. Where do I go? Mm. Well, MQM also had a long list of people, but they took me because the passion that I had, I really wanted to do something. But you see, the counter argument to that is, and again, I wonder, you talked about how PTI is going through what it's going through right now. And then in the past, your party went through the same thing. Um, in the US, when the stock market goes through an adjustment every eight, 10 years, they say market forces have led to an adjustment. Here, Political parties go through an adjustment period and it's just the forces that lead to an adjustment. Is that why you ended up where you did? No, because I, as part of the adjustment, they needed people who can carry the torch and keep things alive. And no, I think I, I'm, I, I'm getting to the point where you, uh, quote unquote, are saying forces. But I'll tell you, MKM was the first political party that originated as a student uh, True. student organization into a political party. And by the way, was the first political party that disassociated themselves with their leader because he went anti-state. Now, PTI is going through the same thing. Although, you know, I used to sit with my friends in PTI. But, but PTI did not start with students or student it unions. Did. So the most organ organic party as to date would be People's Party MQM. Right. PMLN. Now, can we argue that Not about the PTI? PMLN. Yeah, well... I have to be politically correct. PAPP, yes. PAPP. MQM, yes. Because they did start um, on their own yeah. with, let's say, thought leaders in ed in education. Yes, and, absolutely. And, and then obviously MQM had the student union backing yeah, it up. Yeah. Now, uh, things did go uh, south for PTI also. Now, I, I hope they're seeing the... Uh, the bright light through the tunnel that the, I think they're the, seeing light through bars, no tunnel. And that that actually jolts you up, wakes you up, you know, that makes you face reality. And uh, you know what I say, I've been in MQM since uh, post Altaf era, Altaf Hussain era. And I'll tell you the horrific stories I hear. If PTI had to go through 1% of that, I don't know if they could have even withstood any of the torture, the political victimization, the forced victimization, as you call it. I, I mean, I think they've been very fortunate. They've been dealt a lenient hand. And so, okay, let's build on that. You're saying that they've been dealt a lenient hand, others have not. Why would someone be willing to go through all that? Um, why not 
go and build your own business. I mean, you're a successful businessman. You've got businesses outside of the country. And why not spend your time doing that and create value through that? I understand that coming into the politics and the forefront can help create change and impact at a much larger scale and policy and legislation. But there's no legislation happening. There's no policy happening. There's none of that happening, right? The people are not getting benefits. So then why, why would someone with, let's say, an educated upbringing associate themselves with politics when they know how dark the dark side can be? See, if everyone starts believing that, then there's not going to be an end to it, right? I mean, you got to be optimistic. You just can't be pessimistic. You have to come in, make changes. And, you know, we've talked in social settings, like I want people like you, um, other friends that we have, Heather, etc., to come in the mainstream politics. You are the people that can make the change. One person combined with 10 other people with, uh, with the same vision can make a huge difference, I'm telling you. If you're not corruptible, no one can corrupt you. If you do not want to take opportunities that would require you to do uh, work in the gray or the black, you don't have to, uh, trust me. I mean, yes, I come from a business background. I did well. And purely here in the interest of to see what I can do for my community. Let's go small. And then you go bigger, right? I mean, you know, uh, let's agree to the fact that MQM is Karachi-based political party. So what I can do for Karachi, I specifically to my community, I'm, I believe I'm the only one in my community or, you know, uh, I think it was uh, Mifta Ismail is uh, one member that's been, Farooq Sattar has been, and uh, I think the Minister of Industry in PTI, and Bilal Ghaffar. I mean, can you imagine Karachi being a city of... Uh, three and a half crores, which has been counted as two crores right now. Uh, having only four or five Mehman community politicians who drive the business forward. I mean, that's, that's again something to be concerned about. So there's a lack of opportunity. And two out of those politicians, including myself, have come from MQM. And two, uh, one from PMLN and uh, one from PTI. Guess where PPP is? Zero. So since politic, politics is dominated by either People's Party or MQM, and People's Party has not given a chance to any minorities. Now let's see what happens to Murtaza Wahab. Hopefully he becomes a mayor, does a good job. And see, th those kind of opportunities, and again, that perception needs to change. There has to be a comfort level between a larger political party and a smaller political party. And if they combine their forces, they can make a big difference. And that's what I propagate. Let's see if it falls to deaf ears. And even if it does, I'm playing my part. In a city as big as Karachi, right? What do you see as some of the, like, what are the top five problems in your mind that need to be addressed right now? Because, I mean, third, you're saying 35 million people. Public, yeah. the, the census is saying, let's say, 20 million people. Either way, the number is huge. Yeah. Right? There are countries this size. This is a city. This is an economy on its own. It's 46, 47 percent of the national taxes that are generated yeah, from absolutely. here. Yet there's no infrastructure. No. There is no public transport. There is no proper sewage system. There's no proper trash system. Where do you begin with Karachi? And who begins with Karachi? Because if everyone is coming out and getting elected on a Karachi ticket or a Karachi seat, and there are people with backgrounds who, you know, are, are, are non-corruptible, as you said, then... We should see change here, right? No, people in the position where they shouldn't be are corruptible. I mean, if you look at the list of uh, politicians that are out there, uh, you would be able to get a better grasp of what I'm trying to say. I just don't want to uh, ruffle any feathers here. But I mean, you know, it's out there. People know it. Uh, the problem in Karachi is essentially not being counted. That is the biggest problem. If Karachiites are counted, your NFC and your PFCs, which is the money you get back. And the NFC is the? Uh, National Finance Commission. And the other one, PFC Provincial is? Provincial uh, Finance Commission. And just to explain uh, to the audience. What happens is that uh, when you're counted, whatever your count of population is, your resources are allocated according to your population. And so if Karachi is not counted correctly, right. it's not resourced correctly. It's not, you're not given the proper funding. For example, if you have about 10 people working here and in your mind, you're counting them as five, and you're giving 10 people, five people's worth of salary, what's going to happen? They're all going to quit. Yeah, but at least let's say there's 10 people working here and let's say I have 
10 mugs that I need to give them so they can have coffee. I only have the ability to pay for five, right? Yes, absolutely. Those five mugs should be new mugs and clean mugs, right? Yes, absolutely. But the mugs that are given to the five are also broken, dilapidated. No, and so absolutely. that absolutely to me the the problem is not the allocation of the funds, it's the usage of the existing funds that are disbursed. No, and uh, let me just add one thing. People that are not domiciled here. See there are a lot of people that have moved from different provinces to Karachi. Uh, let's let's put uh, your uh, household help or even uh, let's say there's a lot of community from the kpk that exactly. comes down transport they're involved in. they're counted in kpk not in karachi although the resources they are using are from karachi why are they counted in kpk because they they're domiciled out there they haven't done a change of address so why not do that while you're doing the census they don't who's they it's 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 uh, the, it's, it's not the law like if you if you are in the united states your driver's license is not going to be can renewed. that not be solved with a simple question like where have you lived in the last 12 months so now after the 18th amendment we have given up our arms and our legs and hand nose eyes to people's party so till they pass any legislation there is no but there's nothing anybody can do so the census is in the hand of the province Cent uh, census is the hand of the federal government but is influenced by the province like for example what has happened here in the current uh, census they have increased the number slightly but in interior it seems that everybody is having a baby no, and so karachiites have gone infertile i love how you say they've increased the numbers i mean people have increased in number it's not like someone sitting there yes, making a, a surprise, graph and coming surprise, up with surprisingly numbers COVID, on their own surprisingly unless you COVID, want me to believe that no surprisingly covid has made just karachiites infertile but all of <laughs> uh, all of rural sindh is having uh, every I mean, covid has had different effects in different but, parts no, of but, the world but i'll tell you in uh, i lost my sense of smell you did it <laughs> no <laughs> unfortunately it's more than just sense of smells it seems that the rural sin has uh, has gained an ability to have two babies in a year so i don't know how that happens but yeah that has happened so uh, quite an ability to yeah, have I'm, i'm i'm telling you <laughs> i'm telling you <laughs> so you're saying the problem is in allocation of funds I I believe that the whole infrastructure the whole uh, dynamics of uh, for example Lahore ki jo puri market hai Fazan jitni commercial markets hain jo revenue collect karti hai tax mein wo Lalu Khet ki market hai Karachi mein wo utna generate karti hai jitna pura Lahore generate ye mujhe yaad hai chala tha on news a couple of years ago and that's a fact actually you know I just didn't believe because it went viral online right so I looked up into it at FBR and that is the truth so Liaktabad ki market makes gives more money to the government than all of lahore so agar pakistan ka pura jo tax base hai let's say 46 47% of taxes is coming out of karachi why don't we put 46% of it back in karachi the answer is because 46% of the population is not in karachi right we, if we let's just say get 200, 10% back if we if there's 250 million people ball park and you're saying 25 million is in karachi so we should get 10% which is what we're probably getting right no we getting 10% of the money that we giving to the federal government pura pakistan karachi se chal raha hai shehar se subah se nahi not the province karachi is running the whole damn country so if karachi is running the country and look at karachi and karachi is producing competent individuals in circles of power then why is karachi not getting its fair share of support on a financial level to execute on some of the issues that you yaar aap mujhe bataye karachi ka kaun sa aadmi chief minister sind ka ban sakta hai kabhi ye aap mujhe jawab de aur competence ki kya baat hai pmln ne caretaker finance minister mifta ko banaya aur itni kabiliyat thi jo ke hai usme aap bhi jante hain unko ki usko jab mauka mila to utha kar phek diya to aapko kahan karachi aids ko jagah mil rahi hai to at least perform you don't think that there is a situation where let's say an adjustment in market forces can create it's only going to be population if we get the same side effects as rural mm -hmm. sindh has urban sindh gets it because of covid then maybe the dynamics change see you need to be in the position to make a change right now if i take any law to the provincial assembly in sindh nothing's going to pass because 18th amendment gives a right to, uh, ultimate right to the provincial assembly which is majority uh, people's party and they will amend laws and change that so they, they don't want, want more money you saying you're saying that they they are, they are getting enough sir they have other than now actually uh, karachi also is slowly creeping in uh, let's say for the first time in history people's party might just get a mayor 
Uh, and that's simply because MQM boycotted the election. I think it's a it's a sham of an election that has happened, and we chose not to participate mm. in that election. So let's see now. Ajay, I want to switch gears for a second. You run a business that has rental income as the primary business model, right? That is correct. I've always been fascinated with rental income model businesses because they provide steady, stable cash flow. Yeah. Uh, however, to get into that business, you need to acquire an asset. Right. Right. And the asset acquisition, if we are in Pakistan, we have to pay cash, we have to pay financing, or it's very expensive, or it's very difficult to get collateral. But in the US, you can take it. So, can you walk me through the rental income business model? Hai, why is this a lucrative business model and how does one get into this? Yeah, I uh, got into a gasoline distribution business with Chevron Texaco which led me to an opportunity or to identify an opportunity into retail uh, shopping centers. So like the America mein just strip malls? Strip malls, hote hain, jismein paan, rental dukane hoti hain, and then you have a anchor tenant, which is primarily a convenience store with a gas station in it. Right. So I got into those and I have several of those uh, that gives me a steady rental income. So you buy that location, the entire location? Yes, you buy the land and the and location. And then you develop the thing? I usually buy developed because I, I like to get into knowing what I'm getting and if I can enhance the income stream on an existing project versus developing a new one and right. getting into the unknown. See, the, the biggest advantage there is that you can get interest financing with 4%, 5%, 3.5%. And what amount do you have to put down for this? It's typically around 10 to 15 to 20, 10 to 20%. So let's say you have to put down 20%. A, a, a property like this would be valued at how much? Five stores, one anchor tenant, a, a, a shopping? Uh, Two uh, million dollars, which would mean that you need 400,000 now. But when I started off in this business, it the, the same thing was about three hundred thousand. So twenty percent of that was sixty thousand dollars. So you're saying that when and the, the dollar was half of what it was right now, right. even less than half. So at that time, the dollar was maybe let's say six million rupees. Right. For a hundred rupee dollar. Correct. So at six million rupees, right. you were able to get in into mm. a property worth three crore rupees, G. thirty million rupees. G. And then your cash flows that you generated. That pays for the mortgage. That pays for the mortgage. And it also gives me a return on my investments. Right, which is the six million. So it gives you a little bit left over. Left over, which is no, not just a little bit left over. It actually gives me about an 18% return yearly. 18% yearly return. Right. Which, by the way, is a dollar income return. Dollar income return. And now. And then there's the property appreciation as well. Now, the, I can't say that I'm happy that the dollar has gone up because, you know, this country, uh, our country is uh, hurting because of the dollars. But if you convert it, then obviously over a period of one year, uh, my income has gone up 50%. And so when you operate a property like this, how much time, effort and energy does it require? Because you're technically leasing out the, the stores, right? So there's no employees that you're managing. It's not, it's not your operation. No. You've just given the space to someone else. Right. I, I brought my office, uh, head office back to Karachi. So th those are the people that look after my operations. So it's not so a day to day. In Karachi, they run the operation. Yes. So if one wants to get into something like this, right? Like while sitting here or wants to invest abroad, how do you find such opportunities? Where would you look to say, you know what? I want to look for a business that can give me this kind of return. See, again, uh, uh, as we all know, there's a, the, uh, there's a extremely professional platforms available online also. So buy and sell, you know, it'll be, you'll be surprised it can be done online also. Then you have your realtors in place, you have your due diligence in place. You can crunch numbers with the accountant and sitting here. And America is one of those countries that lets you 100% acquire a business, even if you are not a resident of that country. Uh, so so that's, you don't need to be a citizen. You don't need to be a citizen to invest in uh, the United States. Wow. You can be 100% owner living so in Pakistan. I can be sitting here right. with Pakistani income as a Pakistani citizen and I can acquire a US business. All I need to do is send my funds abroad. Abroad, yes. And uh, you, can, uh, you can set up corporations within 24 hours sitting in Karachi. That's amazing. Yeah, it's ease of why doing Why don't business. more people do this? I, the question is, why don't, why don't we have those same... Uh, we know the answer to that. I want to come back to No, this. no, no. I'll tell you why I'm saying that. A lot of businesses are available in the United States that can correspond with business opportunities here in Pakistan. But because of a state bank regulation, it, get, it gets difficult. Even for you... of funds. Exactly. Even if you were to send money there, 
to the United States, State Bank is going to ask you a trillion questions. Right. Why are you sending money? Where are you sending money? Where did you get the money? Right. Which is all legit questions, but it just makes it very, very difficult. But uh, I, I think a lot of people are doing that. I mean, you and, see, Dubai, America, right. London, uh, most of the elites own an apartment in London or businesses in London, America. Right. So that's that's happening. I mean, it's. I, I think more people that have accumulated some savings should look into it. But again, that's that's detrimental to our economy. So I cannot propagate this and I shouldn't. Because the same kind of opportunity should be pre present here. But unfortunately, your prevailing interest rate now is at 22% annually. Right. That's the return. I was I was actually telling you 18% is a good rate of return on my investment. Right. So here you have to give 21% just in interest charges. Right. So it does not make any feasible sense for any business to borrow from the bank. What about Airbnb? Have you looked at Airbnb businesses? I have looked at Airbnb businesses, but again, see, uh, if you if you rent out your properties, your residential properties, now a lot of restrictions have been placed, a lot of permits need to be acquired. And then at the end of uh, every year, you have to put in money because they treat it like a hotel. Right. Uh, they're misused, uh, maintenance issues. But there's a lot of, um, uh, there's a lot of channels now, not just on YouTube, but on all of the social platforms talking about how airbnb properties you can sit and make thousands if not My people are millions in a year people you know? are and all it's the same model you acquire and you don't even have to acquire the asset you just have to sign a lease right and you're basically picking up the cash flows from the stays and it's all automated no now as a matter of fact all uh, new leases that are signed in the united states especially they do not allow airbnb so you have to be owning a property which is a freehold Right. And it's not run by a homeowners association or you don't have a regulatory body over it uh, because people are discouraging it because you don't know who's coming to your house, right? right I mean, right. because nobody needs to be there. They punch in a code and they're in your yeah, house, right? True. So anything, so it's it's security, safety. It's like Uber, right? right? A lot of incidents did happen with Uber drivers and a lot of incidents have happened with Airbnb. As a matter of fact, I was talking to someone, uh, Daraksha Villas, there are a lot of 300 yards uh, uh, home converted into Airbnbs and mm. they're actually doing really well. Mm. They're actually making more money than what you would typically rent your house on a monthly basis. So the Airbnb business model, not just working in the US, it's working here. It's working really well here. Right. And really. so how does, if you look at the Airbnb model, do you think that is a sustainable, viable model? Because here you'd still have to put the cash up front to acquire the asset. You're right. Right. And getting right. the cash on a 22% interest rate doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense for any startup entrepreneur, no. right? So where do you get the cash from? Friends and family? That, that's typically how it's always worked, right? But again, with the economic situation, it's not uh, people are just you know saving up money because you don't know where the economy is headed, right? Right. So hopefully, till we get some uh, economic and political clarity, any new business uh, opportunity is just a, a toss of a coin here. And so you've been and you've been in business for years, right? I mean, yeah. this is just how you've always earned your income. Yeah, absolutely. How does a business person who looks at businesses pure from a cash flow point of view think about cycles like this that we're going through, economic cycles like right now? How do you think about this and how do you sort of prepare to deal with this for an extended period? Sir, so I'll tell you there is some divine uh intervention for pakistan that people have been able to survive even such a long time i will tell you in any developed country also the kind of economic situation we're facing is terrible right I, survival is a problem see fortunately for right now country, specifically yes absolutely but uh, uh for a country like pakistan you got philanthropist i mean even if you try to sleep hungry in this country you cannot i mean but you know, for me are, as a businessman a philanthropist is not going to help me no right? you uh, for now unfortunately this is the first time it's taking a twist for the worse where the top 10 percent or entrepreneurs are being hurt hurt badly a lot of businesses are closing down how do you keep up with your expenses now if you if you have businesses that are built in dollars Fine, you'll be making more money. But in local, people don't have the money to pay. So, I mean, you, you're eating out of your savings and it's actually very terrible. I mean, if, if you look at it, I, I salute entrepreneurs 
I respect entrepreneurs that they're still moving this uh, this country forward. And without entrepreneurs and without ease of doing businesses, it would not be possible for the country to still move ahead as the way it's doing. And I'm hoping in the next 12 months or so, we'll get some clarity and things will get better. Do you think things will get better? I am 100% sure it will. I mean, why? it has to. If has to is not a reason that it no, will. No, that's exactly the reason why it will. Why does Be it have to? Because as a collective force everybody is on the same goal which is to make this country a little more economic viable vi 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 because it's heading to a disaster if there is no country no one will be able to benefit right لیکن یہ تو وقت پہلے بھی دیکھا ہم نے اتنا برا وقت میرے خیال میں کبھی نہیں آیا یہ میں اپنے والد صاحب سے بھی پوچھتا ہوں آپ بھی شاید اپنے والد صاحب سے بات کرتے ہوں گے آج جو حال ہے اس ملک کا اتنا برا حال میں اچھا میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ یہ حال آ چکا ہے اور نائنٹی ایٹ میں جب اکاؤنٹس فریز ہوئے تھے تب بھی آ چکا سر اکاؤنٹ فریز تھے پیسے تھے لیکن آئی تھنک جو میری اس میں ریشنل تھوڑی ڈفرینٹ ہے میرا میرا ویو پوائنٹ یہ ہے کہ حال آئی تھنک ہم نے برے دیکھے آئی تھنک فار دا فرسٹ ٹائم جو پانچ پانچ پاورز دیٹ بی ہیں دو دیٹ رن دا اسٹیٹ آف افیئرس ہیئر رائٹ سو یو گاٹ دیٹ یور ملٹری اسٹیبلشمنٹ یو گاٹ بگ بزنس پالیٹیشنس یو گاٹ بیوروکریسی اینڈ جوڈیشری all five have together never been in a pickle together right, right. kya hota tha pehle ya to judiciary pickle mein aur let's say do teen aur strong chal rahe hain ya to big business pickle mein aur phir do teen aur strong chal rahe hain ya to phir aapka politicians pickle mein aur military establishment strong hmm. hai jo bhi hai aaj panchon ek sath ek soup mein baithe hain aur soup ki aanch jo hai badhti ja rahi hai جو یہ تو اچھا ہے وہ سوپ بنا نہیں رہے ورنہ زیادہ مسئلہ ہوتا سوپ میں ہے تو شاید حل نکلے گا پرابلم یہ ہے دیکھیں امیرکہ میں اگر آپ دیکھیں جہاں پہ بینکرپسی لاز ہوتے ہیں Bankruptcy laws allow you to accept کہ یار آئی ہیو فیلڈ میں چیپٹر سیون یا چیپٹر الیون فائل کر لوں کہ بھائی میں فیل کر گیا مائی بزنس از ناٹ ورکنگ آئی ڈونٹ ہیو دا منی ٹو پے مائی 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 دا ڈیٹرز اینڈ کریڈیٹرز وٹ ایور آئی ڈونٹ ہیو دا منی ٹو بی ایبل ٹو سسٹین مائی آپریشنس آئی فائل فار بینکرپسی آئی گو بیک آئی ریجگ مائی بزنس اینڈ دین آئی کم بیک آؤٹ اے لینر بیٹر اسٹرانگر کمپنی اینڈ آئی ٹیک اٹ فیزان یو نو دیٹ کلوز آئی وانٹ فنش مائی تھاٹ Why can't that rule apply to a country? Right. I understand that there's people at stake. I get it. But if you were to able to, let's say, file for bankruptcy and say, yes, we failed as a state yeah. collectively. Right. Let us kind of rework the state, whether yeah. it is separating, combining, rejigging, narrative building, whatever it is. Right. Right. And let's get back to business again. Why can't we just do that? Fazan, uh, yes, we have that option. Uh, Sri Lanka just did and it came out stronger, right? We are a nuclear state. So we don't have that option. We have that option if we are ready to give up our nuclear uh, positioning. Which But is why we don't have that option. This is why we shouldn't have that option. Mm. And again, my question to you or to, to people that are in the decision making, is it that we failed or our systems are flawed? So why don't we first attempt to fix our systems? The money is coming in. We have the wealth. We have our natural resources. And we've talked in length uh, to people, even in entrepreneurs organization, there are opportunities out there. It's the system that is failing. So why not fix the system? Because everything is there in place. But the system is implemented by people. Exactly. So the people who need fixing. <laughs> That's why half the entrepreneurs organization needs to have a say in the political happening and not just use it as a tool for their own personal benefit. Do you know who the Koch brothers are? Tell me, sir. I think that your, my, my, your answer to your question is when I said, do you, do you know who the Koch brothers are? And that is the answer to anyone entering politics is that you need the Koch brothers on your side. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so you need business on your side, right? Any, any, anywhere in the world, politics and business go hand hence in hand. I so say, not everyone needs to be in politics. And no, hence I say the ex-president, ex EO, another, uh, <laughs> another feather in your cap is that, you, that uh, you're heading one of our regions also. You need to back up the right kind of people. You need to be the kingmaker that makes things happen. So I, let's see if that happens. But before that happens, what I want to know from you is... You picked a political party that has a difficult street narrative. Correct.
So you you picked a political party that had questionable street cred. Okay. Again, you, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, let me correct you. Here. I said it was a victim of his past saying, and perception. Quote unquote. I'm saying it had questionable street cred. Okay. Okay. And kids in your uh, sorry, kids in your kids' school saying perception. Yes. Okay. Would you ever jump ship for a different party? Sir, I believe that uh, what MQM has done for me. and has enabled me to do i would not want to jump ship okay how does let me rephrase my question maybe i asked the wrong question how does one consider weighing their alternatives or is it often a push that is required when you make the jump this is thinking when you come into politics you have to kind of believe that there are going to be situations where you're going to be pushed one way or the other now if actually you've joined a political party and you see that all your efforts are in vain and you're not able to achieve anything that you uh, were meant to or that you had thought you would be able to then you have a right to change right your political uh, your political party because if if it's not in line with your political vision which you thought it would be then yes you have that option to do that change and i encourage people people in people's party people in pti that they should look at options now uh sooner than later i mean you know if it's not in line with your vision it's not in line with your vision now you you come out saying that uh, you know we stand uh, where we stand and just a week ago you were just following blindly the narrative of a leader that was so magnanimous see what it got there there was no sense of acknowledgement the leader was not out for himself yes but when it came and hurt close to his family he was just out there going crazy abusing so it's an alignment of vision and purpose so if you have to first discover what your purpose in life is and you sure you can make a mistake when you go in seeing that right. you know what like i my thought my purpose and vision are different yes yeah, like fawad choudhury i think he's a extremely uh, liberal man who joined an extremely conservative pro taliban party right and i questioned him personally also and i believe uh, eight days in solitary made him question his uh, decision also and he came out with the right decision that he is going to take Is a break a and reanalyze it's a word for that i think it's my phone also just recently had that it was a software update yeah i i think uh, we we take that into consideration uh and we hold it in a sanctity of a way that there is so much influence uh, fazan if you were pushed in a corner uh, is it just because of the software update or your realization that i'm not right for this party or this party is not right for me so you are saying ki agar vision nahi align kare purpose insaan ka ek hota hai wo align na kare then it's okay to sort of consider all options nee yeah, yeah especially if your motivation is to make a change right. and and you feel your hands are tied and you are against a brick and a wall then why would you want to stay in that situation? why not make the change through philanthropy or social causes or fundraising through an ngo because that's another way to create change a lot right? of people are doing forget that. business for a second a lot of people are doing that i mean that's happening but if if let's say if someone's true purpose in life is to drive social change right and to help the people they can go into philanthropy yep. they can start an ngo yes. and help a mass you know drive for against poverty or a mass drive for let's say economic prosperity right. what is it about politics chale business ki to main baat karta hu and i i'm pro business and right. entrepreneurship always right right we talk about let's say giving back to the community through philanthropy sure. and social causes why politics because politics gives you power no matter what you say sure. and that is that is ultimately the driver but right? does money buy you power not always so what would you There prefer money over power power or money that's the i think the lifelong uh, question yeah, right the egg or the yeah but uh, when did, have do you have an ngo i don't have an ngo try opening up an international ngo please I know it's a little complicated. Little, okay. Then you will <laughs> see the need need of you being into legislation making. We have. But that's made, also because NGOs have also misallocated or misappropriated again, funds and uh, funds again legislation. Again le legislation, mm -hmm. brother. This all can only be changed by your lawmakers. Now, as a matter of fact, I was looking at this. ये जो बल्दियाती इलेक्शन हुए हैं हैदराबाद से वो इंटरव्यू करने गया था एंकर तो उससे पूछता है चेयरमैन आप इलेक्ट हुए मुबारक हो कहते जरा चेयरमैन की स्पेलिंग तो करके दिखाएं एंड ही बुच एट द वर्ड चेयरमैन ब्रदर सो यू नो अब वो चेयरमैन दैट इज द मोस्ट ऑर्गेनिक पोजीशन राइट फॉर एनी पॉलिटिकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन राइट बिकॉज दैट्स वेयर योर डायरेक्ट कॉन्टैक्ट इज विथ योर वोटर्स 
Now imagine a chairman who doesn't know how to spell chairman. That is uh, sad. His people must really like him. They, they must love him. Yeah. It's money or power. <laughs> that is the question. So, in conclusion, and I'm going to wind it up here. You brought, you started the conversation up and you mentioned your son, Rafi. Yes. In conclusion, if Rafi and his friends were sitting at the end of college and considering their career options, okay, and they, they, their vision and their purpose they realized was to impact society in a positive way. Okay, let's, that yeah. I want to give back. It's not for me. I want to give back and I want to leave a positive impact and leave a meaningful life behind. Right. And you are forced as their dad to give them one of three choices mm -hmm. that you can create impact by building business enterprise, by entering politics, or by running a social cause or an NGO or whatever. Right. Which one would you pick? See, interesting, interestingly enough, I had this conversation with Rafi and my daughter Anzal, right? And I was one of those parents that was really involved in where my kids should. And you know that. I kind of manipulated my daughter to get into dental school. And that to your dental school right there. So, And then my son, he's in O-levels. And since I've joined politics, he's taken a liking towards politics, right? My only requirement from him is to get a degree that would enable him to make money. And that's the only time he's going to be, he should enter into politics so when you're self-sufficient absolutely when you have enough money to be comfortable join politics politics is not a means to filling up your bank account to feeding your family to feeding your kids it's not possible and i don't want my son living on sixty-eight thousand rupees a month right and my youngest one he's not in, much into politics shayan he wants to be a businessman so yes i'm going to encourage him to do philanthropy and maybe if my son wants to go into politics so my rafe would be who it'd be uh, maybe right. doing his philanthropy through or to so, so basically make money and then join if politics. you choose yes absolutely if it's an option and if absolutely. you want to align purpose then it makes sense absolutely so you have to be comfortable in life to make the right choices and the right decisions and uncorrupt decisions right I think that's a great note to end this on. And I think that summarizes what aligns with a lot of my personal views as well. And I think that a lot of our youth sometimes wonder whether they should get into it, what the benefit is. But yes. And by the way, Fazan, all uh, some credit to you also because we've always had this conversation about politics, etc. So you always used to say, and it took me a while to adjust to it and understand it. You always said, yeah, I want to be comfortable. I want to have enough money not to worry about making money if I want to do anything else. And it's not politics I'm talking about, even if it's philanthropy. And, you know, it's a, it's a process of you having those conversations with you at the middle of the night or in the middle <laughs> of the day, where you kept saying, no, yeah, Rabbi, I, 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 I have to make money, I have to make an empire, I have to business, I have to make a business. And that is the advice I've given my kids. So thank you too. Cheers. I'm glad I was of some help. And I appreciate you taking the time out and coming in pleasure. today and having a chat. I wish you all the best. I know it's trouble times ahead, but uh, we didn't talk IT state. Ki baat hi ki. No, sir. And we keep talking about some things next time. Rakte no, absolutely. There's a lot of opportunity in the IT and exports. Ki. And I think there's a lot that can be done by you know people absolutely. like yourself. So thank you, thank thank you, you so for much. serving the state and thank, thank you. you for being here. Thank, thank you. you all for tuning to Digitales. Subscribe to the channel below and continue watching our content. Bye-bye.